everything goes into the soup. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, what kind of nutrients make your lips sticky? Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I mean, it's full of calcium, collagen, proteins, you name it. Dr. Brandon Lip. Welcome to the pod. Yeah, Um, glad to be here. I known you for a long, long time, right? Uh, My wife started seeing you Actually, your father. Yeah. As many a, years a, back. Yeah. Before we had kids, right? So, <laughs> so she was seeing your dad to to get her body prepped up for the pregnancy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And your dad is this infamous Chinese doctor that nobody <laughs> nobody can make reservation. Like nobody, like dude, this dude is like it's in the sunset, and you have to stand in line outside in the cold right. two, two to hours, see him, right? Yeah. And then so then things. yeah. Hours, right? So I was like, "Wow, what, what is going, what is going on here?" Like, they got to be good. So, Lord and behold, we saw them. We, we, we get Chinese medicine. We have these two beautiful, beautiful boys. Thanks to, thanks to uh, Brandon and his, and his, and his dad. Um, and so when, when I first met him, it was him at his dad's uh, Chinese doctor practice, right? And then he's sitting in the corner. Right, just like like well, a, I was kind of learning at the yes, same time, helping like, my parents. I don't want to say like a bad way, like he's in trouble, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> but he's like he's like doing his like study, like this is his like externship, well, right? Yeah. right? I wasn't banished to the corner. Yeah, no, no, no. He was there. Like then, eventually, now he's our doctor, right? His dad retired, and now we Brandon is our doc, is our Chinese doctor, right? So. Tell us about tell us about yourself. I know a lot about you, but I think the audience would love to know. You know, like what do you do now? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, my background uh, really gives me all the resources to do what I need to do, mm-hmm. and I really want to uh, tap into the medical world, mm-hmm. um, into the healthcare world, with mm-hmm. uh, a different perspective. So, mm-hmm. um, I have a background in family medicine. Like you went to doctor school. Yeah, medical school training for uh, basically family medicine, okay. and I sort of see it, uh, adults and kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, but my main interest mm-hmm. is looking not just in conventional medicine, mm-hmm. but using Chinese medicine because I got exposed to it as a kid. Mm-hmm. My father, mm-hmm. like you mentioned earlier, is a uh, Chinese herbalist, acupuncturist, been many many years, mm-hmm. and I see all the things that uh, can be done with Chinese medicine that mm-hmm. can be done in conventional medicine. So, mm-hmm. um, I think that's my specialty mm-hmm. uh, is to be able to integrate a lot of concepts in Chinese medicine mm-hmm. and be able to use that in the real world mm-hmm. with uh, people who come in and had had their evaluation treatment with conventional medicine aspect mm. and see how you integrate that. So like um, anybody can come see you or yeah, it's all I don't since I don't advertise right, right. Yeah, yeah, sure. all by referral right. uh, one patient you know, referring them to another yeah so. and and your schedule is always full <laughs> like that's like that's that, that's the thing like anybody that comes on this podcast doesn't need any more business that's the thing like everybody's like turning away business so I'm just like you know what you need to come on here so that you can share your knowledge to more people that cannot come and see you, right? <laughs> well, I mean, this is a good medium. So uh, I think uh, there are a lot of things that people have as a misconception mm-hmm. about their health. Mm-hmm. I literally have patients that come up to me and say, oh, yeah, I eat, you know, I eat really healthy mm-hmm. and uh, I have a healthy lifestyle. Right. And when I evaluate it from a <laughs> conventional medicine versus a Chinese medicine standpoint, uh-huh. there's such a big difference. Right. And uh, you le- actually learn a lot from it. And- okay, so for example, when I was, you know, I don't know, like when you first met me, I was kind of maybe even still kind of heavy, right? Maybe, you know, relatively heavy. And I was doing a lot of juicing, mm-hmm. right? Just mm-hmm. raw juice, like just, you right. know. So Western, med- like to Western world, juicing did the best thing to me. Like I lost almost 100 pounds juicing. But probably to these the, these guys, they were like, "Man, you gonna kill yourself!" <laughs> like, like you you know, like this is this is why this part of you is not good. This part of you is not good. Like, it's cold, right? Well, it's I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> uh, there's definitely you know antioxidants. There's uh, a lot of good fiber right. in in juicing, uh-huh. and and one of the things I always notice is can apply the same concept to everyone. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. what works for one person could be totally detrimental to another person. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, juicing for some people's, you know, way of the physiology, it might work really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, for others, it, it might really mess them up. Yeah. And um, like, even I had to throw in ginger, like I, you know, so, the, so then like, there's like these Chinese way of like thinking about food, right? Like the heat and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Like, food energy. You know, right. Yeah. So you know, now we're like getting turmeric and stuff like, you know what? Just, just making sure, you know, I'm not sure you ever come across this documentary that talks about, you can't eat like, you know, five oranges in five seconds, 10 seconds, No, no but no. you can down orange juice in five, 10 yes. seconds. Yes. yes and, yes. and basically a glass of orange juice is like five, five oranges. oranges yeah and the consumption yeah. is too quick right? yeah yeah so what happens is that what's good for you if you consume it in a really really short mm-hmm. concentrated form may actually be bad for you mm-hmm. so a lot of people don't put don't no put some thought up into it until they kind of break it down they realize mm-hmm. hey maybe there is something there you know mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and then brandon is also the person that I, if you look if you look into the channel like if you look past the first few episodes there's a video of me and brandon doing paella this was a cool. long time that was a long time ago like uh you know and and we, we did it out of his house right and you can see the date is probably like four years ago that we, mm, we posted it's, that it's right? before the pandemic right yeah so for sure and then so so you have to you, you, this man actually have helped me like for as much as he's helped me in my health, my family's health, my wife's health, my kids' health, my mother, like everybody's health, right? He's also helped me with chasing my dreams. Like he was crazy enough to be like, hey, yeah, let's go make some, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's go make some cooking videos. Like this like it has zero to do with what he does, but he, you know what? He has a good heart. He's like, hey, yeah, let's go do it, you know? But now there is a recipe that we worked on that, it's actually really, really good for a lot of people. The fish soup recipe, oh, yeah. like, you know, tell people about this fish soup and... Right, and, you know. right, right. Well, um, if you have to ask me what's the, one of the most nutritious uh, you know, soups that out there, mm-hmm. I actually think that uh, fish soup, mm-hmm. so the Chinese way of making the mm-hmm. fish soup. Uh, I remember as a kid, mm-hmm. my grandma would... Um, uh, cook a type of fish soup called Dian Yu Tong. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the big, big eye yeah, the fish big soup. eye fish soup. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always thought it was uh, uh, very interesting because every time after drinking that soup, if you kind of smack your lips a little bit, mm-hmm. it's sticky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I asked my grandma, I was like, why? Why does this soup do that? Right, you know, right. no other soups do that. It's uh-huh. like you know, it, it's it's sticky. Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, all the nutrients from the fish, the mm-hmm. bones, the meat, everything goes into the soup. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wow, what kind of nutrients would make your you know, mm-hmm. you know, lips kind of sticky? Mm-hmm. And it turns out, I mean, it, it's full of calcium, right. cal- you know, collagen, proteins, yeah. you name it. And it's not easy to make. Yeah. You know, I mean, and that's the <laughs> thing, easy. like to get to get the to get the soup creamy white, it it requires a lot of technique, right? It Very requires, you know, it requires a lot of, you know, trial and error. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, you think about it, your grandma gets uh, one set of fish bones a day. Maybe if you get a fish a day. Yeah, that was in Hong Kong. Yeah. We go to the bazaar, the right. open market. Yeah, yeah. And yeah you the get, wet you know, market. Yeah, wet market. And, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, you buy the stuff fresh, and yeah. and you can you know, cook it the you know, same day is the best yeah. way to do it. Oh yeah, and for sure. And then you got to practice a lot, you know, to get it to be creamy white. You first of all, you need a really hot pan, and then you need some kind of alcohol that interact with the fat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's, it's a, a trick. It, yeah, I have so, so many it, patients it, ask me, it's like yeah. I can't do it. I yeah, can't do it's it to like be a, creamy white. Yeah, it's like an emulsification thing. Yes. So yes. Um, it, even when we try to do it ourselves, it's still not as white as a restaurant. Cause the restaurant, I mean, the restaurant, yeah. I mean, okay. It's, it really isn't, it, it really isn't that they're doing anything different, but the amount of heat, the amount of heat that is in that walk and the, uh, the amount of emulsification that's happening, mm-hmm. it's just in comparison, it's different. Like you can. High, high, high heat. Yes, yeah. Su- super, super high. Like you have, you have to understand. Like if you, for those of you who don't know what emulsification is, 
right? Can you, yeah, you, you mind if I get a little, little shot? Yeah. <laughs> so emulsification is when you have oil and and like oil and water, like usually oil and vinegar, and you try to mix them together, right? If you do not emulsificate them, mix them together with some kind of like a bonding agent. Usually it's like egg white or must like egg white mustard is a really good for like emulsification is like making dressing, right? So mm -hmm. if you make, mm -hmm. if you need to make a Caesar dressing, for example, you, it's like, it's like lemon juice, olive oil, egg yolk, and, uh, and a little bit of Dijon mustard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And emulsification happens when you have a lot of action in between the two things that don't mix the mm -hmm. oil and the water, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes this white creamy thing. For it to stay in texture emulsification, that needs to happen really quick, really fast, and it needs a lot of action. So at home, you only have so much heat in this pan. No matter even how much you make mm -hmm. it like screaming hot, smoky, mm -hmm. right? It's only so much heat. Mm -hmm. So those uh, electric uh, convection no. stove tops, and you know what? It. <laughs> <laughs> it it's hard because it doesn't. The heat doesn't come back up. Mm. as quick right so you mm. have so at, at outside the restaurant it's a walk right thin thin, just thin walk mm -hmm, mm -hmm. lots yeah, of fire, fire right? Right. right you know and they're just they're in there they're actually frying the fish in oil so there's oil fish fish oil comes mm -hmm. out from the bones mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then alcohol mm -hmm. right right makes it super heated the steam mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. generated mm -hmm. it's and the broth that you're putting in. So it goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. That little process right there of like two seconds determines if your soup is white or not. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I can see why some patients uh, you know, right, have would, ask about it. It's like, right. how do you get it to be like the restaurant? Right. Yeah, you, you, you have a really smoky house. <laughs> And your house is not like fish for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> but you but, just get yourself a superfood, yeah, in terms but of But it's really good for you. But it's really good for you. And that's why, you know what? I mean, when you go to Chinese people, that's why their house always smells like fish. <laughs> <laughs> and now a quick break. We hope you're enjoying this episode of The Art of Chef. If you're listening to us on your podcast app, we want to invite you to watch these episodes again on our YouTube channel. This is a completely different entertainment experience. Especially during our guest interviews, we love to spice things up with GIFs and other visuals that really bring the episodes to life. So don't be a stranger. Subscribe to The Art of Chef on YouTube and download episodes wherever you get your podcasts. And then the point is, mm -hmm. you know, you want to have a nutritious soup. Mm -hmm. So yes, you, you get from a restaurant, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to totally replicate the taste. And the taste could be still really no. good if you do it yourself. Like my, my grandma does it. I mean, you know, all grandma does it. And it's <laughs> all hella creamy. Okay. <laughs> so, grandma's little secret, right. both of our grandmas. <laughs> I don't oh, know. I think, I think it might be, they use more like the tail fin part, like just more fin. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. The whole, they throw the whole fish in it's there. It's okay. It's okay. You know what? Everything. And you know what? I will. We. It, that's why when we we're talking about this, you know what? I'll go seek it out from Lorraine, who is the food curator for Martin Yan. Right? She's my Chinese food expert. So I'm gonna go and ask her. I would say I ask my father-in-law, but then for my father-in-law, it would show me, but he won't understand why it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Like he, he showed me, he showed me like a thousand times <laughs> and I'm like, I can never figure it out. But Lorraine would actually probably give you like a science. And break it down. Yeah, exactly. Another good segue is that Chinese people in soup, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can you tell, tell, uh, tell our audience a little bit about like, like you said, well, one of the, one of the things that you recommend is fish soup. Like, so do you recommend us to drink soup? every day well i wouldn't like know a, anything that's good if you use it too much it's going to be bad okay. so i would say like the can, people that's sipping bone broth <laughs> like well i i know some people yeah uh, like, because yeah. There's, there's a lot yeah micronutrients and and um definitely a lot of good to it but mm -hmm. again even if you have something good if you overuse it mm -hmm. yeah it's going to be bad mm -hmm. um so fish soup i mean why i i think it's so nutritious is mm -hmm. energetically so we just talked about touch about food energetics mm -hmm. a little earlier is relatively neutral um, okay. And there are. Can types you of give soups. a little yeah. bit of background mm -hmm. with this 
Yeah, the food energetic. Yes, stuff. yeah. Okay. I mean, there's okay. some of these people like for for me, I'm just learning right now. I don't want to say some of these people. Hey, excuse me, my lovely audience, <laughs> you're not these people. <laughs> so the, yeah, so I can literally give, give a whole hour talk just no, about okay. food energetics. But the summary is that um, actually, every, and this is totally on top of how nutritionists would look at, like you know. The calories, the fat content, you know, the the vitamin C, on you know all the kind of like the labels that you mm -hmm. see associated with food, mm -hmm. it's totally on top of that. Mm -hmm. So every food or drink that you consume mm -hmm. has an energy associated with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that it passed down, you know, through generations and how Chinese medicine looks at it is that uh, it looks at it like in temperature. Mm -hmm. So hot warm, neutral, cool, and cold being mm -hmm. the extreme. So hot and cold, obviously, the extremes. Mm -hmm. And why those, uh, um, you know, categories is because um, in our human physiology, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us have a certain type of constitution where mm -hmm. we're leaning more towards a kind of hotter end mm -hmm. or a colder end. Mm -hmm. While some, a lot of us are like also Like not neutral. temperature, but like... Like, like in, 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 in like energy. A, like, yeah. like the aura. Like if you can see like that. Like yeah, you like know, you get the two metaphysical, okay, but sorry. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the energy mm -hmm. is actually used a way to categorize the symptoms that you tend to get mm -hmm. or the way you feel. Mm -hmm. So, for example, some people tend to get a lot of like, you know, sores in their mouth. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, they would break out with sores in their people. mouth. Yeah, they're kind of more like a like hot symptom. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, those who tend to have like, uh, you know, kind of, when they go to the news number two, mm -hmm. they tend to be on the looser side mm -hmm. in terms of their stools. Mm -hmm. That's kind of on the more colder end. Oh, okay, it's different, okay. different symptoms that you know. You know some people say, "Yeah, I, you know, I, I tend to get you know cold sores a lot, mm -hmm. or I tend to you know have loose stools a lot." Mm -hmm. Whatever you tend to as you grow, and this changes as you get older and older, mm -hmm. or as you age. But shouldn't change that much if mm -hmm. it's your base co base constitution. Mm -hmm. So then the foods that you eat can either interact with your physiology, whether mm -hmm. hot, cold, or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. Whether it will augment and worsen some of those features of it, mm -hmm. or actually offset, or does nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, why I like fish soup because it's relatively neutral, mm -hmm. meaning that it kind of basically it would be good for the bigger audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you have a quote unquote hot, more hotter physiology or a cooler mm -hmm. or neutral, mm -hmm. it will work for you. So, you know, in, in terms of this, uh, the soups wise, uh, for something like that, broader audience, good type of nutrition from even conventional medicine and, and from a Chinese medicine. End. So I think something like that, which is universally relatively applicable, it's great. Mm -hmm. And there's one also other concept that it's super important is that uh, I know a lot of uh, you know Asian cultures when they make soups love to put in different types of herbs. They mistakenly put in herbs thinking that's good for them mm. at, or their friend or relative said it's great for them and mm -hmm. they use it thinking that it's good, mm -hmm. but in fact, slowly it just going against their yeah their physiology mm -hmm. and and so when we talk about like fish soup we mm -hmm. don't need any herbs or anything like mm -hmm. that in there mm -hmm. um and and when you take soups which are have like you know these extra ingredients herbal stuff added mm -hmm. to it and if it's not compatible mm -hmm. uh with your body mm -hmm. you can actually do some really bad stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and these are things that that People look back and then they can't correlate. Oh, you mean it has to with the food that I was consuming? They wouldn't make that correlation. Mm -hmm. They just start getting these symptoms mm -hmm. that in the conventional medicine realm would start a whole workup to evaluate for everything mm -hmm. and might just kind of end up either they can't find what's mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. but the person feels miserable, mm -hmm. or they do find something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a elevated liver enzymes mm -hmm. or. Um, decreased kidney function, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So um, I always usually advocate for things which are relatively neutral. Mm -hmm. So number one, you know, just like in medicine, you know, one mm -hmm. of the things that we, we uh, say when we graduate is first do no harm. Mm -hmm. So first I mean, do no, no harm. harm. Yeah. So so basically, you know, in terms of like recommend recommending something, mm -hmm. I would say something that's relatively neutral mm -hmm. would be the safest way to go. So that's mm -hmm. why I left like recommending fish soup so much. Mm -hmm. Because even when you're sick or when you're not sick, or, you know, no matter what culture you're in, 
uh, if you use it right, which is maybe I would recommend maybe two or three times every mm-hmm. month, mm-hmm. Uh, would be sufficient. It doesn't oh. have to be every day. It doesn't have to be you know okay, okay. every week. You okay. know, two or three times per month. It's not bad. Oh, that's not bad. And at all. You won't <laughs> drink all the soup all in one sitting. <laughs> so whatever you make, you probably consume over two or three days. Oh. Okay, yeah, make a make 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 enough so that you can store. You know, you can store you can store it, and you know what, you can use the fish soup to cook with it. You know, you can just add it into into. You can consume the meat, right? Yeah, you can consume Which the fish. Is yeah, omega threes, great. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and I I add tofu. Tofu tofu is really your good protein. Yeah, okay. really good, mm-hmm. and then. And then just some cilantro, actually, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's really Gives it. Gives a great flavor, yeah, right? that's yeah. really it. And yeah. then if you want it to be, like, red, then you just add it, add tomato. Like, the really, like, mm-hmm. the fish soup can be, like, that was, like, three versions of fish soup right mm-hmm. there. You mm-hmm. know, once you once you figure out how to do the, the basics. But um, thank you so much for coming on to the show, Brandon. Thanks for joining us today. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed this episode, it only takes a moment to post a positive rating and review. Your support allows us to grow the community and reach more extraordinary people just like you. And come check out the Art of Chef YouTube channel on your next lunch break. We'd love to see you there. Thanks again for listening. See you in the next episode.